my name is Nell Wood. Thank you so much for joining me for this yoga session. Please gather what you need in order to feel most comfortable and supported. You'll see me using blocks for support. I'm on blankets. I'll also be uh, taking a drink as I need it, so make sure you have that stuff. And then when you're ready, you're gonna settle in on your breath. Find that comfortable seat. Make sure that your legs are comfortable. Don't let them fall asleep or get tingly. You're in charge of how close they are. They don't have to be really close. They can be extended out in front of you, whatever feels comfortable. Stay with that internal awareness of your breath. Your eyes can close if that is comfortable. If not, you just have a slight gaze a few feet in front of you. staying connected to your breath. You're setting aside all that's going on in the world, in your life, and you are just being with your breath right here, right now, your body right here, right now. Grounding and at the same time lifting. You're practicing both. You're practicing taking in what you need and letting go of what you don't need. That in and out is the rhythm of everything. You taking the time to plug into that just helps your connection with yourself, with what is going on in your life that much better and deeper and fuller. So if you are having a hard time unhooking, if you're being kind, compassionate, gentle with yourself, loving. Some days it's harder than others. Some days we have more stuff than others going on. The act of showing up and setting aside the time, making that a ritual, that is what, that consistent act is where the difference is going to come in, where it's going to make a difference. It's change in real time. So you're breathing however feels comfortable, whether it be through your nose or your mouth, and you're filling up those lungs on the inhale, and you're releasing fully on the exhale. Staying with that internal connection, that deep, full breath, that is doing more than keeping you connected into the present moment. It's calming you down, it's oxygenating, it's oxygenating the blood and it's coursing through you so it protects and energizes and nourishes the body. So when you're ready to start, let that breath get fuller and deeper, start to do that three-part yoga breath where you fill up the lower third of your lungs, then the middle third, then the upper third, and then release fully upper, middle, lower. And let that three-part yoga breath help to keep you anchored even deeper. Do you want to add that constriction to the back of your throat? This is the same constriction that you do when you fog up a mirror or a window, typically with your out breath through your mouth. I'm making the noise right now. You do that same constriction while you're breathing through your nose in and out. You might be able to hear mine. But the point is for you to have it, you hear it in your own head, your breath. It's the ocean sounding breath to help keep you connected. Make sure that you're comfortable arranging your legs however you need them. Always taking time to re-engage, to, to move and then re-engage and not letting anything get tingly. The breath is that three-part yoga breath and you're letting it be as full and deep as feels good and as you fill up the lower third of your lungs, press your navel into the space in front of you and then the middle third of your lungs fills up and those ribs move up and apart. The breath goes into the upper third, feel your heart move up in your chest. And then you exhale, heart and chest relax. 
ribs move down and together, and then you pull that navel back and up into your body. And then the inhale happens again, and you fill up navel, ribs, chest, exhaling fully, chest, ribs, navel. All you need to do is focus on your breath, set aside the story, the to-do list, and just be with your breath, cultivating that loving connection, working on the witness, observing. Feel yourself engage with your whole body as you inhale and press down into your mat. So get that lower girdle involved, that back body pulls down, front body pulls up, press your knees away, flex your feet, no matter what position your legs are in. That engagement helps to get that supported base. That supported base is coming from within. You've activated from within. You're doing it. You're holding it from within. And then on your exhale, lift yourself and stretch yourself into all that space around you that you are meant to take up. The upper girdle gets involved, heart lifts, blades gently come down and together. You might feel a slight pressure on the tops of your shoulders as your collarbone comes apart, pressing the crown of your head up and your tail down, front body lifts, back body pulls down. And you are doing both. You are not only grounding and supporting and anchoring from within, but you are lifting and rising and stretching from within. So you are both, you are doing both from within to stay connected to that deep, full breath, navel, ribs, chest, exhaling fully, chest, ribs, navel. Your hands can make their way to your heart. Take time to set any personal intention you might be working on. It can be a combination of something I've already spoken about or something you're working on. And then let your arms move in that great big wide gathering of energy. This is going to be the planting of the seed deep into the soil. Try to keep those girdles engaged. Inhaling, the arms reaching up, not hurting any joints or delicate parts. Exhale, pull in. Third time, inhale and exhale. Sealing in those intentions and then the yoga practice can be the sunshine and the sprinkles of water. All right, and then also the time. Let yourself unwind, drop those knees side to side. Waking up, I'm not putting any weight really on my limbs. I was, and if you do put any weight on your limbs, you're not hurting your elbows, your wrists, your hands. You're being very careful. If you had your legs tucked up next to you, you might want to gently roll your ankles. You're never being harsh with those delicate tendons, letting yourself open uh, naturally and softly, staying connected to your breath. Inhale and exhale. And then when you're done with whatever reset posture you're doing, you're going to bring yourself back into that easy pose posture. Oh, Make sure you've got room to reach. We're going to inhale, do that great big wide reach, but this time we're going to just gently twist side to side. I want you to think about keeping your navel anchored and then you're rotating, you're lifting and rotating your heart. Inhale and exhale, let those arms lap, reach to one side, doesn't matter which side. So it might not be a very big twist if you're keeping your navel anchored and you're only rotating your heart and that's okay. But one of my very favorite things, I'm twisted to the right. So I've got my left hand on that right knee. I'm going to reach that right arm up. And then I'm going to gently take that left elbow towards that left knee. And I'm really engaging that lower body. I'm keeping my elbows and my wrists protected. But I get this fabulous stretch right down my side body and it can be a big one it's actually both sides so make sure that you are protecting and remember the way you went you're going to come back up and then let yourself unwind just pause 
Notice how you feel after that great big side stretch. And then a couple times side to side. And then you're going to land. I'll land on that opposite side. So my hand is not, it's just gently resting on that leg. I'm never using it to grip or hold on for dear life. That left arm behind me. I have those girdles engaged. I've got my navel anchored. I've got my heart lifted and rotated and then I'm going to lift that back left arm and as I get it up I'm going to start to just dip down towards that right knee and oh my gosh this stretch down my side is amazing hopefully you feel that you are always protecting yourself inhale and exhale and then let yourself lift up and then come back through neutral if you want to move side to side Again, please do if you just want to pause with your hands at your heart or your navel or one of each or out to the side, whatever feels good to you. Let yourself do that. Inhale and exhale. Stay with your breath. And then bring yourself down onto your bellies. And I am going to keep a nice, um, very, very flat cushion just to keep some, just to keep some cushion for the pelvis. Arms are going to come down. I'm still not putting a lot of pressure on my wrists or my elbows. Always being careful, keeping that shoulders engaged. And I start with just gentle, gentle windshield wipers. Maybe you just want to do a little rock. Maybe you want to do some combination of that. But eventually you're going to be done with the movement. Now I'm going to keep my head lifted so and turn towards the device so you can still hear me and understand me. But you, I would like you, if you don't have to look at me and you can just hear my words, is to keep your head down towards the ground just because that keeps it in a supported, safe place and you're not wrenching it out of, um, out of like whack. And don't worry, I am not wrenching mine out of whack because I hold all, I hold myself in my girdles all the time, which is what your girdles are for. And so in this position, I want you to feel yourself, hold yourself in your girdles, walk your legs together, engage that lower pelvis to start with, pull that back body down, lift that front body. You've got your upper body, just your chest on the floor, your shoulders and your face are a little bit up off the mat and your hands are down by your sides. And just engaging and pulling into your midline is a lot of work. Just keeping your head lifted and stretching over the mat is a lot of work. And then from this position, you're only going to add more to it if you want to. The next place to go is the lift of the legs. So keep pulling them together as you lift. Keep those hips down. It's a, it's a framework and muscle. You're lifting at that girdle. And then only if it feels good to you do I want you to stretch that upper girdle away from that lower girdle. Keep pulling that back body down as you lift that front body, only letting those arms reach. Keep pulling those legs together. Take the big full breath and if you ever lift up to a place you don't want to go just come right back down here's where you release turn those heads make those little cushions with your arms do whatever feels good to reset the pose that those these poses on your stomach and i think this is called prone right so supine is when you're laying on your back um, or maybe it's the other way around. I'll have to look that up and I will make sure I cement that in my head. But it doesn't matter. You're laying on your belly. But these are subtle, subtle moves, but it is so, they, they, they really make a big, big impact. So don't blow through these. Don't think these don't work because I'll tell you, they do. I've spent 20 years doing yoga and it is amazing what these little moves do. So back in that beginning position, you've got your face down over the mat. The only thing that's lifted up really is your shoulders. They're engaged, pulling down from your ears. Here's where you're going to isolate. Let the left leg start to float. The right leg is staying just relaxed on the mat. You're lifting with that glute. Keep pressing evenly. It's a subtle move. Inhale and exhale. You are stretching your upper body from that lower body, inhale and exhale, stay with that breath, relax if you need to, down all the way, but the next is the other side, it's the other side's turn, 
Um, when you're ready, inhale and exhale. Those arms stay down and they're not gripping on for dear life. They're just gently pulling out of your ears as you now let that right leg. And you're not trying to get it to the sky. You're trying to reach it to where the back where the wall, where the baseboard is behind you, if there's a wall behind you. All right, let yourself release down once again. Reset with those windshield wipers. Whatever feels good. Inhale and exhale. And then back with those legs active behind you. Pulling them, pressing them down into the floor and then pressing them together. Now elbows right underneath your shoulders and you're going to lift yourself. So forearms and fingers come forward and they're you're not so make sure that your elbows are not wider than your shoulders they're right underneath your shoulders and then right here this is a big stretch keep pressing down with that lower body as you stretch that upper body only if it feels good to you do you press and lift keep those shoulders out of yours if you lift up and you don't want to come and you don't like it, then come back down to the elbows. But if you are here, lifted, you are breathing. If you want to walk back a little bit, keep protecting those elbows. Keep those shoulders out of your ears. Let those lower bodies be super heavy and make sure those feet are not pulling up off the floor. And then if you did come up high, you're going to bring yourself back to your elbows. And then at the elbows, lift and splay them. Keep those shoulder girdles engaged. I feel a marvelous stretch then as I bring my whole body down in between and then let everything go and start to wiggle, rock, windshield wiper, whatever feels good. Inhale and exhale. Stay with your breath. And then I'm going to come over onto my right side. I've got my right elbow right underneath my right shoulder and I'm on the right hip. The left hand can be on the left hip or it can be on the floor in front of you and I've got my legs stacked. You can also be down on the right arm stretched out. Same thing, left hand in front or on the hip. It's probably going to feel more supportive right in front. But whatever you're doing, you're keeping those girdles engaged. You keep pulling those legs together. Inhale and exhale. No matter what you've chosen, you are still lifting from that, um, that keeping that lower body heavy and lifting that upper body. And then this is just, let's just lift the top leg a couple times. Inhale and exhale. So keep pressing through those heels. You're just lowering and lifting that top leg. Make sure you're protecting joints. You're not hurting anything. And then bring the legs, have the legs be together down and then this is a small move. You're just lower and lifting, and this is where you get a little bit more lift if you've got that arm down, I think. But it's up to you. You're protecting yourself. Inhale and exhale. And then eventually you're going to be done with that movement. Let yourself release. One of my favorite things is this inner thigh. I'm going to bring this left leg. It's on top. I'm going to bring it down in front. This is another pose where you're being careful with, if you're on that elbow, you're being very careful. Still press through. If you're on that arm, that bicep, you're being careful. No matter what you're doing, you're being careful. Press through that um, heel, that right leg that's down there, and then I'm lowering and lifting. Keep trying to bring this left knee up to the sky. This is a lot of trunk work to get your, your body in the right place so your limb can reach. And then you're going to let it go. You're going to bring yourself back. You're going to be back on your belly. I'm going to press myself up just so I can move to the other side. You could just probably roll to the other side. Now we're on the other side. I'm going to be on my left side for this side oblique work. I've still got the cushion. I'm being very careful with my joints. Remember, you're always protecting yourself. I'm stacking pressing through those heels, inhaling and exhaling. You can also put a blanket or a towel here if it provides a little bit more cushion. And then it's just the lower and lift. This isn't a big move. You are just working that, that hip joint. Keep pressing through both heels, both legs, or both legs active, but the top leg lifting. And then bring the legs together and then being careful. Inhale and exhale.
couple more. And then you're going to let yourself come into that inner thigh move so the leg comes around as much as it can, making sure you're protecting your joints. These are Pilates moves and I am stealing them from Pilates. Pilates wants us to take them. They're not, they, even though this is a yoga class, I like to incorporate all different kinds of exercises because everything matters and I think it's, it's amazing we can do that. All right, let yourself release from that position. Come back onto the belly and then not hurting those elbows, those shoulders. You're going to lift up into your table to then come back into your child and completely reset. Letting yourself breathe full and deep, navel, ribs, chest. Exhaling fully, chest, ribs, navel. Make sure you hydrate as you need to. If you are using blocks, you are being very careful with your joints, never hyperextending. I want you never to hyperextend. I want you to learn what it means to not hyperextend your joints. And so then you're really careful when you're out in your life and you don't do it there either i want you to feel what it feels like to engage those girdles both of them the lower and the upper engage your front body and your back body to work together so you support yourself out there in your life and you are not hurting those delicate parts and you're putting the work into the part of your body that needs to do it all right up into your table hands come underneath those shoulders Knees come underneath those hips. Don't hyperextend those elbows and you're moving through a teeny tiny pelvic tilt. The, you're pulling the back body down, lifting the front body, and then you're doing the uh, pectoral crunch where you're pulling the blades together, dropping the heart, pulling the blades together, dropping the heart, and then um, pulling the blades apart, lifting the heart, and then you're in that place of support. And then that cat and cow is in that middle thoracic back, that middle thoracic back. So the little cat and cows with the girdles help to get them in place. So your hyper mobile places are supported as you put that movement more in the thoracic back, which gets no love. And remember, typically, you're not hyperextending those elbows. All right, into your stable table. I'm gonna rest in that child. I'm gonna make my cushion just a little bit more here. Coming into, I'm gonna bring my hands onto blocks just to lift me up a little bit. I tend to sink down to the floor. My limbs aren't very long. Still engaging those girdles, pressing evenly down into the floor. You're gonna let that right leg press back to find that length. Try to keep those hips Nice and square, press through that heel, the right kneecap is pulled up into your thigh. And only if it serves you do you reach that opposite limb, because if it doesn't serve you, don't reach that opposite limb. Keep it, it in that supported position. Remember not to put the weight on your limb. It's holding you in your trunk. Take another inhale and then let it come down. Rest in your child if you need to, and then you're ready to re-engage. Press through that left heel, reach that right opposite arm, breathing full and deep, navel, ribs, chest, exhaling fully, chest, ribs, navel, stay with that engagement and that length, and then bring yourself down to rest back completely in your child. And yes, even though I'm saying it's a rest and that's what you're doing, you are still holding yourself in your trunk. So you're bringing that back body down, lifting that front body, staying with your breath. Inhale and exhale. And hopefully you're all doing well. You're taking care of yourself, drinking water. The next place is downward dog. Coming into that stable table, Spread those fingers, curl those toes, lifting that lower girdle up into that downward dog. The more you keep your knees bent, the more you're going to put the weight into that back body. Stay with your breath, inhaling and exhaling. You are 
coming up onto your toes because that might feel really good to you, but you're eventually going to settle onto the balls so you can lift those toes so they're not doing any work. Let the heels be heavy. Remember to protect your elbows. Decide how you want to make your way to the front of your space. Maybe you want to drop to hands and knees and step up, or maybe you want to walk up. Doesn't matter how many steps you take, you're coming into that forward fold position, that position where you are reaching down, you're finding that hinge. Keep those knees bent. Don't let those toes do any work. And let yourself sway and move how it feels good to you. Inhale and exhale. I actually, I also like this uh, gentle head press. It is amazing. Eventually you're gonna be done. You're gonna be in your forward fold. I want you to stay with your breath, connect to your navel, take an inhale halfway, flat back, keep those knees bent in order to protect your hamstrings. Exhale, reach for the floor, inhaling and exhaling. So we're holding poses, but we're not holding our breath. I am cueing when to move though. If it doesn't work for you, of course, do what feels good. Inhale, lift up halfway, but the inhale helps to lift, right? Makes sense, it helps to lift. Exhale helps to this is where your exhaling helps you to get a little bit deeper, to fold a little bit deeper. So let's do that one more time. Inhale, halfway, flat back, back on my heels, not using my toes. Exhale, down to the floor. The next time you inhale, if you want to come up in that great big reverse swan dive, if you don't feel dizzy, go for it. If you want to come up in steps, halfway up, flat back, hands above your knees, and then press up to that awkward chair, and then stand to your mountain only lifting and reaching and coming into as a much back bend as feels good, but you're keeping that body engaged, that back body pulling down, front body lifting up as you stretch. And then you find your hands at your heart, navel, one of each, and then you come into your mountain. This is feet right underneath hips and you're activating the balls and heels. Whether it's a tripod or four corners, Find that connection and then lift your digits, spread them wide for that, and then bring them down for a gentle grip on the mat. Kneecaps, pull up into your thighs and your, lay, your knees stay soft, not hyperextended. And then you do that first girdle engagement. This is framework and muscle. You're pulling the back body down, engaging the glutes. Yes, it's a gentle squeeze of the glutes, but it's also the framework internally Pulling that navel up, pulling that glute down to engage that lower trunk for that place of support. So think navel dimples and dimples on the back of your body, um, right above your glutes as down as the support and a navel dimples up. This is where you should feel light and almost like you can float right up off the mat. That's how I feel. I feel like I'm the rock and the wind beneath my wings. I know it's so cheesy, but that's how it feels. Heart lifts, blades come down and together, arms reaching down by your sides. I know this is a big setup for just standing, but once you engage, don't hurt those elbows. Once you engage, it makes all the difference. No work with the toes. Feel that slight stretch at your collarbone. Keep pressing the crown of your head up. As you gently bring the tail down, inhale and exhale, stay with your breath in your mountain pose. And so try to keep maintaining that sensation of grounding and then also stretching and lifting in your mountain pose. We're gonna move through a couple rounds of easy sun salutations, not very fast, nothing too um, complicated or hard, all the moves that you do in sun salutation contribute, I mean, it's all the moves you do in real life. So I want you to pay attention and notice how you feel. All right, into your mountain, top of your space, you're supported and lifted. You're gonna inhale and reach into as much of a back bend as feels good. Make sure you engage those girdles. You're gonna exhale, swan dive however feels good. Whether you're reaching wide or hands coming through heart, hinging into that forward fold and then lift up halfway into that flat back and then bring yourself back into that forward fold. Decide if you want to come down to hands and knees 
or you want to step back into plank or come right to knee down plank keep those girdles engaged elbows right by your sides you're releasing down to the floor keep that lower body heavy as you lift into as much of a cobra as feels good it could still be a baby cobra and then lifting into your downward dog which you don't have to do because you could just go to table and then to child we're going to make our way to the front of your space no matter how you do it it doesn't have to look the same as you did before but you're moving to the front of your space finding those legs underneath you in that forward fold halfway flat back reach down for the toes and then lift up coming into that great big reverse swan dive remember to activate your whole body pulling the back body down lifting the front body as you lift to come then forward this is your exhale your hinging lifting that upper body feeling that support in that lower body forward fold halfway up flat back remember not to hurt your elbows or your shoulders as you come back into your plank knee down plank to release down to the belly and then lift into your cobra or maybe an up dog or maybe it's just a baby cobra and then back into your downward dog inhale and exhale or not you're going into your child or your table we're going to do it one more time i like to do things in threes to the front of your space make sure you feel solid supported and 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 anchored in your body as you then lift halfway flat back back down for the toes to then go up above your head back bend as much as feels good to come forward into the forward fold find that length lift up halfway flat back come back down to step back plank knee down plank it doesn't matter come down through that to your cobra you know what i mean and then once again back in your downward dog inhale and exhale and after a couple breaths make your way down to your child resting completely stay with your breath so that really helpfully got some blood flowing and you are feeling nice and warm inhaling and exhaling you're letting your breath come to a manageable level. You're not moving um, into the story of really anything. I want you just to stay in the witness, be observant, treat yourself with kindness, compassion, and love. Be grateful to your body for what it can do inhale and exhale all of the moves that i lead you through are things that you do in real life so hopefully you see how it helps to contribute in your real life inhale and exhale stay with your breath so let's come on to uh the back to come into a figure four or pigeon on the back and take your time you've rested in your child you've had something to drink you're coming on to your back same rules apply though you're pulling that back body down lifting that front body i'm keeping my feet on the floor to start with and then after i adjust my pelvis and this is where the navel and the pubic bone and you can make the diamond so you can feel it because if your diamond is not in the same plane you want to pull that pelvis so that's gently pulling that back body down lifting that front body and then lifting the feet and that keeps you grounded so you don't hurt that low back after a few moves you're eventually going to find yourself back with those feet on the ground if you did have them lifted and then let the right ankle come to the left knee keep pressing evenly through both glutes flex both feet stay right here this is a lot only picking up that foot if it feels good now if you want to reach through you totally can i don't want you to grab or clasp hard behind that leg and if you lift up your upper body once it's still fine but then try to bring it back down still not clasping so you relax down so you aren't like 
overextending yourself in the stretch. I want you to protect yourself. Inhale and exhale. So like your elbows are always protected. You're never putting them in danger. Never putting those fingers in danger by clasping too harshly. You're never putting the delicate tendons in the back of your leg in danger. Keep that back of your neck long by pulling your chin down towards your chest. Inhale and exhale. Keep bringing both glutes down. This is hopefully getting deep into those hips. Remember which leg you have up. So if it's not the right leg cross onto the left, you'll just manage that. I'm gonna bring both down. I'm gonna move a couple times. Ooh, did you hear that pop? Back into that alignment engagement. I'm now going to bring the left ankle on top of the right knee. I'm still activating that, activating both legs. The lift, so I'm pressing evenly through both heels. I'm trying, and I know it's not delicate, but I want you to really be one with your crack. I don't want you to be lifting your crack up off the floor. You're trying to keep your crack down on the floor no matter what position. So that means it's in. Um, it, you know, what position your legs are. That means it's in a place of support. That means that girdle is supporting you. Your hips are doing what they're supposed to do, which is support you. Inhale and exhale. Breathe through this stretch. It is a big stretch. Stay with your breath. Don't hurt those delicate joints. Inhale and exhale. All right, let yourself release. You're going to reset with some movement, rock, circle, windshield wiper, some combination of that. And then keep those girdles engaged, arms come out, shoulder height, palms up or palms down. Remember to protect those elbows. You're gonna keep that heart anchored. So I'm going to keep that right shoulder connected as I let the knees come to the left. And then your gaze is wherever. It doesn't have to be in the direction you need. It doesn't have to be in the opposite direction. If you even have your eyes open. So your nose is really pointing wherever feels the most comfortable to you. But I want you to try to spread that upper body. Feel your wingspan completely on the floor underneath you as you let that navel rotate. So now I'm going to lift, bring that navel back in line with that heart, and now keep the navel um, moving in the opposite direction as I keep the heart anchored still and keep that opposite shoulder connected. Stay with your breath, inhaling and exhaling. And then bringing yourself back through center, rocking, circling, windshield wipering. Make sure that you um, move all your body around any way that feels good. We're going to go into relaxation. I'm going to sit in meditation while you're in relaxation. You, of course, can do that as well. Make sure you're always protecting yourself if you have layers, make sure you get them near you. And so here's where all the magic happens. This is where it settles deep into your muscle memory. You've worked up all this oxygenated blood. You've worked up all this good juju. So now let it settle. Just like those little moves that are subtle, if you keep showing up and doing them, right, it builds up. The same with relaxation, with meditation. So let yourself Come to the place that most supports you, always doing whatever feels good to you, and then let your eyes close if that's comfortable and settle in on your breath.
awareness at your body and your breath, slowly starting to wake up. If you're laying down, or seat, no matter what position you're in, just taking those small movements, the fingers and the toes, a gentle circling of the wrists and ankles, a bend of the knees and elbows. If you are laying down, take time to roll to one side. Rest in that fetal life position, no matter what position you're in. You're coming to that awareness of your navel. You are grateful to yourself for being born and grateful to yourself for doing yoga. And now you can go forth and do awesome things with your intention. So hopefully you feel the root has taken in and now you can continue to water and shine sunshine on it. So pressing yourself up, being careful of your delicate joints seated, your hands can make their way to your heart. Take time to be grateful to everyone that has done yoga with you and you can bow towards your device, which is what I'm gonna do. I can energetically feel you through the device. Thank you so much for joining me. It's been my pleasure.